Hello, Pastor Paul from Grace Lutheran Church. Uh, just wanting to check in with you all and see how you're doing. I know that this is a crazy time and there's a lot of fear and a lot of sadness and a lot of confusion. Uh, there are things being canceled and there are people who are scared to go out of their house and though we've been asked to kind of self-quarantine in some ways, um, uh, I want you daily to kind of check in and see how, see how you are and to also say feel free to be in touch if you'd like to, uh, by phone, if you'd like to uh, have some conversation. I wanted to let you uh, in on a few announcements and then I'm going to uh, read some scripture and preach a little bit and then I'm going to um, pray with you and then uh, I will check in again uh, tomorrow. The first thing for you to know is that um, ministry is still happening at Grace Lutheran Church. Uh, the youth and family, uh, youth and families of the congregation are still being ministered to. Uh, communication is still being sent out to the congregation. You'll be receiving a letter soon. Um, uh, I'm coming to you live in this way, in part because on Sundays and Wednesdays uh, we will be ceasing worship for a while. That The sermon that I will preach on Sunday, I'll be preaching remotely from my home via this, um, uh, this way, will then be aired on the uh, radio um, as it normally is on Sunday morning. So no worship on site on uh, Wednesday nights and Sundays for the next couple of weeks, and then we'll reassess. We've also made the decision to, um, to close the office. Now this is for the sake of the neighbor and not just for those who might come in and out of the building, but also for our staff uh, to be exposed to uh, the coronavirus uh, then doesn't allow us to be healthy or uh, to uh, be able to be effective in ministry, so please know that. But also know that your staff is working remotely. Um, I will continue for the most part to be in the office, to be in Mora and to be with you. Now should you uh, be in need of assistance from me or Leah or Krista or Kelly. Um, we are uh, posting our cell phone numbers on the doors of the church and also uh, the announcement on the phone will be able to um, get you uh, to one of us um, uh, to connect and to have some conversation. So we are still uh, connected. We are still working. We are still uh, alongside you in all of this. So please know this. And as a as a result of us being alongside of you, let me say that because ministry is still being done, um, in addition to your prayers for the ministry of the congregation, we invite you to please uh, continue to support financially the life of this congregation. It is hard to do ministry uh, in, in any sort of situation and joyful to do ministry in a, any sort of situation. But in this time uh, uh, where there is a lot of uncertainty, uh, people may feel like they're going to pull back financially. I hope that that's not the case. I know this congregation to be quite generous um, and open-handed. Uh, I pray and hope that this continues uh, in our life together. Ministry uh, needs to continue to happen uh, uh, through this congregation into the wider community and world. So please join us in supporting the life of this congregation. And I think the last thing I want to say before I begin my uh, little uh, small uh, message to you is this. 
It is easy to be scared. It is easy to pull back. It is easy to think the absolute worst in terms of what could or what will happen. But the truth is, we don't know. We don't know how long the virus is going to last. We don't know its impact on us, on our congregation, on the community or uh, surrounding communities. So I invite you to join me um, in praying for God's presence and work among us, for God's healing and new life, for God's leading and guiding. You know, God has a history of walking with people in uncharted territory through uncharted, unprecedented situations. God has a history of making promises in the midst of those things, not promising outcomes in terms of what others will do, but promising instead what God will do. In uh, Isaiah 43, God says, uh, I'm about to do a new, a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? We might be uh, more on the last part of that verse. We may not be able to perceive what God is up to, what new thing God is up to. Yet we trust and we hope and we lean into the mercy and grace and love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus. So please join me in praying uh, join me in reaching out to others within the congregation, maybe by way of phone or email or um, uh, Facebook, or uh, um, there might uh, write a letter. Uh, there might be any number of ways, even though we're not together um, in a regular way right now. We are still together in Christ. So please continue to carry one another um, in your prayers. And now uh, I want to uh, read for you from Exodus, the third chapter. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He had led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and Jebusites. The cry of the now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? 
he said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In this story, we see an encounter between God and Moses. Often people tend to talk about a burning bush because of in this story there is indeed a burning bush and to say that God does not speak through burning bushes any longer. Well, maybe God didn't speak through a burning bush before Moses saw God in this third chapter of Exodus either, but here in this time and place, God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. The bush was burning, but it was not burned. And Moses was invited to take off his sandals because he was on holy ground, because God was present, because God was speaking to him, because God was calling him to do something that was uncharted, unprecedented in, his, in Moses' mind. And as a result, scary. It is not surprising that in this story, of Moses and God, that it is all a little too much for Moses. He sort of hides his face from God, maybe the way Adam and Eve hide from God, maybe. Maybe the way you and I hide from God when God calls us in the midst of a time that needs our gifts in which God could use our gifts to proclaim God's love and mercy and forgiveness and hope to a world that seems fully drained from any of it. We hide because it is scary. We don't know how long, how long uh, the effects of the coronavirus will hang around. We have the um, guidelines from the CDC, so we know what they're thinking. We've heard from our president, we've heard from our governor. We know that things have shut down around us now, including the, the Lutheran Church. But does that mean that God has somehow left us? That God is calling us to proclaim love and grace and mercy and healing and hope but that God has somehow hidden God's face from us. Remember in the 17th chapter of Exodus, uh, the question is asked, is the Lord among us or not? In this story, Moses is scared. He doesn't want to be burned. Maybe he had been burned before. Maybe uh, in his life before we meet him, or in between when he is born and this time where God appears in a burning bush. Maybe there have been moments where Moses has experienced trying to reach out, trying to share love, and maybe uh, that has not gone so well. It is easy to use past experience to guard us against reaching out in the name of God's love and grace in Jesus Christ. We've been burned before, you might say, and then you begin to list all of the reasons or all, all of the reasons why that's true and all of the times when that has happened. So, um, Well-worn list prepared of why God should not use him. I jokingly uh, say when I talk about Moses' call from God in this third chapter of Exodus, that Moses will often say, here I am, but send Aaron, send, send somebody else. 
And this is not uncommon in the call of the, of the people of God throughout Scripture. God calls, people throw up excuses and reasons, basically, uh, uh, um, that boil down to the idea that they've tried in the past and been burned. Yet yeah, God's promise continues uh, to echo in this story, continues to echo in our lives. To Moses, he says, I will be with you. To us, he says, I will be with you. We don't know uh, the ins and outs, the actual details what will uh, happen from here on out, just as Moses didn't have a clear-cut uh, idea of how things were going to unfold. It would be easy to grow scared and bitter, and maybe in some ways Moses did throughout this story. Still, God was faithful to Moses. God was faithful to his people, uh, the Israelites. God is faithful to his promises in all times and places. In the waters of baptism, God has promised to be your God. And he has promised to walk alongside of you. And he has promised to give you strength and courage and peace and love and hope. He has promised that not one thing will tear us out of the hand of God. Not one thing. And so just as God calls Moses, God calls us as well. Just as God makes the promise to be with Moses, God promises to be with us as well. Just as Moses was scared that he would again be burned, maybe we too are scared that you and I will be burned. And yet the promise, the love of God, the mercy of God never fails. This is a scary time, just as it was a scary time for Moses and for the Israelites. Will we lean into God's promises and trust that though we feel like we are incapable, though we feel overwhelmed, scared, will we trust that God's promise to be with us is not only enough, it's everything. When I was in college, I worked uh, a couple of the summers um, at Camp Vermilion and Camp Hiawatha, Voyager's Lutheran ministry in their early days when the two camps came together. And uh, it was during staff training and we had to do some outdoor adventures, sorts of things, kind of team building and also just kind of uh, confidence building um, among the staff. And one of the things we had to do, uh, we were up in a high level and we had to be hooked into a belay and we were going to um, just jump and I did not want to do that. I did not, I didn't know. Uh, Heights and I are not best friends. Still, uh, we were invited to jump and I made every excuse in the book as to why I couldn't do it. And quite frankly, I shed a few tears I was that frightened, afraid. I was afraid that I'd jump and somehow the the line that was hooked between me and and the larger line would break and I would plummet to my, um, at least to some injury. Finally, the person below said to me, Paul, you're scared. And I said, duh, because <laughs> I was, I was scared. The person said, look, I'm with you. I'll catch you if you fall. You're going to be okay. Jump. Well, finally I ran out of excuses and my tear supply had dried up. And so I jumped. 
the line did not break. I stayed up and what I was involved in in that exercise was actually pretty incredible. I couldn't have known it before I jumped. And I couldn't have jumped had I not heard the word of promise from my friend who was down below. But even if the line would have broken, even if I would have plummeted, still there would be arms there to catch me. Still, the person who spoke words of promise would have done everything in their ability to care for me if in fact I fell. We are not only made promises by God, but God also um, lives out that promise, not just in words, but in surrounding us with those who have their arms open, whose hands are open, whose lives are open, to walk alongside of us as well, so that we can live out the call that God has given us, even in an uncertain and scary and a difficult time. So hear these words again from God to Moses. I will be with you. And as the people of God, we are there with one another. And not just with ourselves, but with the wider world as they struggle with what's going on as well. Already we've had people stop at the church and uh, at the church we've heard requests for things like toilet paper or money for food and uh, thanks be to God we've been able to respond to some of that. But how do we continue to open ourselves and our lives to the care and love that God has given us for the sake of the neighbor? How do we do that? How might you do that? even behind closed doors, even as you listen to these words over Facebook or over our website, how might you lean into God's call, trusting that though things may not go perfectly, you will not be burned. And the God of grace, who brought again Jesus from the dead into new life, will be with you now and always. Let us pray. Gracious God, so many words in our ears these days, so many things we do not understand, so many things that cause fear and panic and par paralysis uh, to settle into our bones. And then God, you come to us and you promise to be with us and we're not sure if we can trust it, given everything else that we're hearing that is so much louder sometimes than your still small voice in our ears and in our hearts and in our minds. So God, speak again and again and again, maybe a little louder, maybe a little stronger. Open us, set us free from the tomb of our fear of our paralysis. Set us free to follow where you lead so that we might walk together in your grace for the sake of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless and keep you today. Remember, God is with you, not in a syrupy way or a way that would ring true on a Hallmark card, but in a real and embodied sort of way. God is with you now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.